All right, welcome everybody. Chris Petrie here. We're having a great time. We're doing our Extreme Beginner Series video again. Uh, we're always uh, creating new videos for beginners, so if you're just starting out, if maybe you've just been painting for a couple weeks, couple months, even a year or two, and you're uh, looking to get new information um, to help you get to the next level with your watercolors, you're at the right place at the right time. Here in this video, we're going to kind of just cover a basic um, tutorial on creating a wonderful house somewhere down in the south where the roof pitches are nice and mild and slight um, clay tile roofs beautiful blue skies we have some gorgeous greenery here with shrubs and trees gorgeous sunlight um, that is raking across this uh, beautiful house here we're going to cover all the details we're going to show you how you're going to draw this scene we're going to show you how to use maybe a ruler and some measurements to get your roof pitches perfect and also how to cover getting everything just in the right spot for you as you're going to attempt to do this uh, beautiful painting. So let's get started. Again, simple um, art supplies. We have all the art supplies uh, in the description box below in this video too. So if you want to um, just check out what we're using for our art supplies. You'll see everything there. So you can go on Amazon and pick up a few things if you want to get started. If it's your first time, welcome if it's your first time painting. It's a perfect time. You're at the right place at the right time if you're starting out and you're thinking about painting watercolors. Okay, so let's uh, get started. We'll get right into it as far as the drawing, how we're going to set everything up uh, as far as our pencil sketch goes, and then we'll get right into the painting. All right, we just saw the finished painting. We're gonna start to create uh, this wonderful painting here on my channel. And this is the Extreme Beginners uh, series on my uh, YouTube channel. I have um, created a, what I call Extreme Beginners series videos. And these are basically, if you're just starting out, you're starting out with some real simple basics with your supplies, your art supplies. You have a Prang Oval 16, you have you know, a uh, simple pencil, some paper, you know, we're going to be using some more basic brushes, nothing too expensive. This way you just start out in watercolor. If you're a beginner, you don't want to be, you know, maybe spending all that much money on a lot of art supplies and things like that. You may not like that. You might decide, oh, I'm going to do pastels instead or, or oil painting or something. So you might have to change your medium that you're using. So you might start out with watercolor for about a month or two doing these videos and you have a nice cheap set of uh, paint, you know, paints here and some inexpensive brushes and inexpensive paper. You start out with that, try it out. And then maybe from there you might say, oh yeah, I really do enjoy watercolor. And then you might start to, you know, actually uh, spend a little more money on better paints and better paper. But in the beginning, start off just using basic supplies. I have all my supply list down uh, in the video, right below my video, you'll see in the comments section, I have links to Amazon where you can just check out all the art materials that I use. And I pretty much list everything that I use personally. And then you can also, from there, you can also ch check out other, uh, other items, uh, other art supplies online too as well. But I give you what I use and what I find is the best for the money and works the best for you when you're actually working with watercolors. So just so I um, keep on my focus here, um, this painting, again, we're going to do a very um, soft pitched roof here. Like this might be a Southern type of roof. So I meant to just kind of do a quick note, note here, just on some paper. This would be a soft, like a soft, mild pitch on a roof, and that would be like southern areas where there's not too much snow and ice and things like that, and storms with snow. And then you'll notice that, like in the northern regions, like you know, let's say we're just talking the United States. In the United States, like the South would have pit roofs that are pitched kind of mild, like this, soft pitches. And then up in the northern areas, like where I live in New Jersey and New England, and up in that way, up in Canada you know, your roofs are going to have more of a pitch like this. This way, if the snow builds up on your roof, it's going to melt when the sun comes out and melt and, and you know, drain off your roof and you won't have a lot of weight on your roof of all that snow and ice. Whereas down south, you might not have that much snow, maybe only a couple inches a year or something like that. So you can, the, the roof pitches can be like this, very soft roof pitches. And then up north where there's cooler climates and more snow, you'll have roofs pitched like this more and that's going to be like the look of the architecture lots of steep pitches on the roof and then down in the southern regions of the earth or in the united states wherever you know you'll see very 
kind of mild, soft pitched roofs like that. Just a little note, and then you can kind of en just enjoy the beauty of the architecture of how they create uh, these wonderful homes and buildings and things like this. So, again, this is going to be more of a southern style uh, house, and we're going to have fun and just kind of enjoy the shapes of everything and not really be so... Um, let's not think we're painting a house. Let's just think we're drawing and painting some beautiful shapes and, and colors and... So we'll have some trees up here like this, and they're going to kind of blend in where the roof is like that. Some trees here, and then some more trees over here that are going to kind of um, kind of envelop around the house a little bit to make it more uh, looking like it's has some really comfortable th things around it. And then we'll just keep things quite simple. I think I'll make a little bit of a, maybe a hedge here. There's some hedges over here. Let's just do some hedges. And again, you can change around your composition from what I'm doing. You don't have to do exactly like this. You try some different ideas if you like, you know, don't, don't get too bogged down with exactly what I'm doing. You know, feel free, do some different ideas of your own if you like. That's what art's about. You're going to do things your own way. It's your art. You're going to do it. You're the artist. You're going to do things your way. So what I'll do is I'll just keep that real simple pitched roof. And, the, and the, I think the key to just one more, I guess, idea is with a roof like this, you, you want to try to really make sure you can try to keep that and you can actually, for instance, you you can trace if you, if you're just starting out in watercolors too. Don't mind, don't you know? Don't be worried about it. You know, trace once in a while. Trace over some magazine clippings or um, maybe over the top of your phone or your computer. You can trace some things out if you want to. If you're having a hard time getting angles and things in the beginning, don't worry about it. Everyone traces once in a while. I still do it myself too. If I have a a project that someone asked me to do and I have trouble with the drawing, I'll start tracing some things to make sure I get everything just right. Because if it's for if someone hires me to create a painting, I want to make sure it's really beautiful and exact and really looking good and sharp. And, you know, so don't ever feel feel, feel bad about having to, you know, just be humble and, and maybe trace once in a while to get some angles correctly. So this one here, I wanted to mention wanting to get this this roof angle correctly like you want to try to have it so that you have the same distance from here down to here and you also want to have that same angle going up and like this so that's kind of important you can also use a ruler at times or actually a ruler is fine you could use a ruler on this to try to get a, a really excellent sh sharp angle where it's really good you know you can let's let's try it This might be a really good way to get this angle on this roof is just you take some paper or you take your watercolor paper and you draw uh, a line across it like this very lightly like that and you make a mark there and then you might just measure it and say well what is this th well this is let's say four inches okay that's four inches there so you make a line four inches long then you you come over and you say two inches is the center and you go two inches there. So now you have a line four inches long. You could make it three inches long, four inches, six inches, whatever size your paper is, you can adjust your measurements. But for just for basics here, we're going with a four inch line. And then in the center of that four inch line is a two inch mark, which is the center. And then you can just go up and say, what, what does that, how much do I have to go up to sort of have that angle where it's a soft, you know, like we were talking about, not a steep pitch, but a but a mild pitch like that. How far do we have to go up? And I would say right there, three quarters of an inch would be fine. So you can go up three quarters of an inch, make a mark, and then that's your point there. So now you have the point up here of the peak of your uh, gable roof. So now you have the point of the gable, the ab absolute center of that gable roof there. And then you just take your lines and you just go right down here Like so, and you make a line there, and you spin around and come over here, and you make a line over here. And that gives you that perfect pitch, perfect roof, just like that. So you can get this 
by just using a ruler and a couple measurements and you can adjust your measurements accordingly you can use the metric system you can use centimeters whatever it is you just basically you're just making whatever size line you want to make this you just divide that line in half like we did here right in the center so you have half of the line here half of the line over here you go up three quarters of an inch so you go up you're going up three quarters of an inch here up three quarters of an inch or you know three centimeters or two centimeters whatever that is this works out to be two centimeters so if you want to do centimeters you take your ruler and you might say okay I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do an eight centimeter uh, gable roof so you go over eight centimeters okay that's the width of the the building and then you you come up two centimeters maybe we'll even go up just one because we made it smaller smaller here so that's one centimeter okay so that's one centimeter up from this line up here one centimeter and then you just again spin your ruler over connect up your lines to your dots and your hash marks and there you have it look how good that looks and then you have a really beautiful like that and then all you have to do is just go back in with an eraser I'll use my Faber Castell eraser actually let me do it quickly by using a school pencil here office pencil and you just erase out off that line there like that so you can erase erase that line there that you started with and when you start with this line you can make it really faint basically just so you have it there and then you get your line up here and then you just you go over a little bit with your eaves of your roof so you have a little bit of like that I hope that makes sense I hope that helps you when you do some of your roofing angles you can use a ruler throughout this whole uh, drawing now maybe we'll do that maybe we'll continue working with our ruler here so let's do that I'll take this next roof over here we're gonna do this one's a little more simple we're just gonna do um, pretty much a another gable roof but it's facing the opposite direction so if you could imagine over here is looking like this over here but we can't see it so that just looks like it's straight there and we'll come down and then we'll do another uh, roof over here and we'll make some clay tile roofs on here why not let's do some really beautiful clay tile roofs so I'm just gonna make some angles like that so you can imagine that it's if you start to work with a ruler these are half rulers this is a helix it's called the helix brand half ruler they make them in six inch half rulers these are kind of nice if you're working in a smaller like we're doing here this is like a six by ten uh, if you're working with a larger sheet of paper well then you can by golly you can uh, use a larger ruler like this and then we'll put another line here and then what we'll do is we'll make another roof over here one more roof over here like this like that and this one lines up with this roof too okay and that's pretty much it and we'll just put a line down here like this and that's our build that's our house this is our beautiful home here nice southern style home clay tile roofs we're going to make these roofs orange and again um we're going to have fun with this we're not going to get too caught up with every detail again like we were saying um we'll put a chimney over here like that we'll put a chimney over there that's maybe on the other side and then over here we'll have a little Blue pipe there on the chimney maybe a little cap on there too all right and then we'll have some more let's do another maybe we'll do a nice beautiful bush over here a shrub like that and then maybe what we'll do is we'll think outside the box here and we'll say let's let the viewer sort of see through 
our painting a little bit. So what we'll, what we'll do is we'll just erase this line a little bit over here with a kneaded eraser. I'm using my uh, Faber-Castell kneaded erasers. These work phen phenomenal. No crumbs. So when you do your erasing, you have no crumbs anywhere on your paper. And um, I'll make this bush like this, and then I'll sort of leave a space there. So we'll, we'll be able to see through to the other side of the building over there. So that's what I wanted to do is sort of have a bit of area where we can kind of... And we're going to have some more shrubs over here. Look how good those shrubs look. Over here, those are kind of more in the front there. Maybe we can bring this down a little bit. Maybe these shrubs are a little lower. Maybe we want to, we want to keep those shrubs all the same height. So these might be some taller shrubs here. I'll make this lower. Again, adjust your adjust your um, adjust your drawing as you have to. And then we'll just put a beautiful arched doorway here, like that. Like that. And then maybe an arched window over here too, like that. And that's an entrance way there. And then we'll have some brick steps here. Okay, and then, uh, what else, we'll make another Make another bush or tree over here. Some, and then over here we're going to make a window. Okay, a window there, and then an awning over the top of that window. Like that. So we're going to have some awnings on our windows. And then we're going to do the same thing up here. We're going to... This here, we're going to have a balcony up above here. And up above, up above on that balcony, we're going to have a door like that. And we'll make that a transom up top like that. And then we'll do an arched window over here. Now this is important to try to just transfer down your line here so you kind of do a little bit of dashed lines or just a little bit of a center line here so you keep yourself on center and then we'll do our arched window here. So I'll make the bottom of that window a little bit above the balcony wall here. So if you can imagine if we take our ruler and say the balcony walls here a little bit above that balcony wall. We're going to start the bottom of this window. And again, you can just adjust your... Uh, nothing is real critical. You don't have to worry about getting anything exact. I'm just sort of having a good time here, enjoying myself. I'm all enjoying this drawing together. And let's continue on. Here, let's make another uh, window over here, behind this shrub over here. So these hedges, we're making some more gorgeous windows, and then we're going to have, again, that awning like this. We'll have an awning there. And what else? Well, I think we have everything pretty good. There might be a little shrub over here. And there's a planter there in front of the window, and then there's some shadows. We're going to have some interesting shadows, so I'll put in my shadow lines now. My shadow lines are going to go here. Here. This window's in shadow. Like that. This is all in shadow over here. Because that's set back. It's a balcony. It's set back. And then the front of the balcony is going to be in light. And you'll see how our shadows develop as we go. Um, there's a little bit of shadowing under here. Not much, though. And then there's definitely shadow on this whole window. And where else do I see shadow? Uh, I think that's good. So I think we have... And there's some shadow over here. So I'll put some hash marks on the, on the paper where I think I see the shadows. You could put light, very light 
hash marks on your paper where you're going to be making things darker. And there's shadows all in here in this window. And there's shadows here in this window too. It's all dark. And then uh, where else do we have some shadows? Uh, I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty much most of the shadow and we'll paint it. And when we're painting it, you'll see how the shadow, shadows will develop as we go. And we'll have a fun time doing it. Okay, so let's take a break. We've done a lot of drawing. Take your time doing the drawing. That's really the part that takes usually the most time. I, I know most of you have left me comments and you, you've told me in the past, Chris, you know, I the drawing is the toughest part. Uh, and I agree totally. Drawing is, is more difficult than painting. Painting's not simple either, but drawing is, you know, still is, is challenging sometimes. So take your time. Do a more simple rendition of this if you want. Take maybe a small section of this and just do that. Maybe you might just want to section off something like... I used to do this all the time, and I still sometimes do it. You could take like a, a um, mat like this, and you can just kind of cover over an area and just make, create this part of the painting. Or you might come over here and say, I'm just going to do this part. Like that, and then you could kind of just not worry about over here, this right side over here. You could just make it one structure like that, and do that. And, and work on that. So don't feel like you have to do the whole composition. Do as much as you, uh, you know, as much or as little as you want. You know, maybe you, you're doing just the center section here. You do something interesting, like a you want to do the doorway, so you're going to do that. So you know, you might, you know, kind of make it smaller like that, and just do the front doorway and capture the shadows, the colors of the clay tile roof, the sky, the color. We're going to have a fun time doing the washes. You're going to see how much fun watercolor is on this video because we're going to mix up beautiful colors here and we're going to get lots of those colors right into the painting. Fast, quick, and you'll see now that once we have our drawing done, then you really have fun. You're really excited. You're going to be putting on the washes and that goes really smooth and, and, and you're really going to enjoy it. All right, so let's come back. I just want to again take a quick break. Let's take a break together. You've done a lot of drawing at this point, I'm sure. Once you're done with your drawing and your sketch, um, then you, then we'll go in and we'll mix up some paints and we'll get going. Okay? All right, we'll be right back. All right, so we're uh, getting back into our painting here. Let's uh, mix up some colors. I just have to get a few brushes ready here. So let me see what we have. So uh, my brushes I usually use, again, I'll have all my materials right in the, down in the description box below. Uh, I usually have everything, I, I usually purchase most of my materials and my supplies, my paper, my brushes, all my paints. I, I buy it on Amazon, it's so easy. I just order it and it's like to my house in like two, two day, one or two days. Um, so I don't have to, you know, do without it with any, you know, do without anything right away. I can just always get my supplies and quickly, efficiently, and there's great prices on Amazon. In any case, though, I do put everything I have down in the description box below. You might have to click the um, word that says more. I know sometimes when these videos play, my videos play, they usually have kind of like, um, they don't always have everything uh, opened uh, up uh, underneath my video. So sometimes it's hard to find things, but all you have to do is click on more. Usually if you click on more, like more information, usually you'll find all the other things that I have attached to my YouTube videos, which will give you more information about my art supplies, what I use, my brushes, my paints, my papers, all that good stuff. Uh, my book, I usually list my book below in the description box, so you can want to pick up my book. It's a great book. Um, all you have to do is just open it up and just start working, painting the paintings that are in my book, and you'll learn a ton about watercolor that way and how to paint and paint efficiently and uh, successfully. So, um, what we have here, I'm just using, these are beginner's style brushes, synthetic brushes. Again, the description box below will have all of these art supplies for you if you need to purchase them, if you haven't already. Uh, I know many of you are already following along that are doing Extreme Beginners videos. You probably have all these art supplies. This is the Prang Oval 16 watercolor set. So, you know, I'm using two flat brushes and a round brush. And uh, let's see, we'll spritz our, I use a Holbein spritzer bottle just to get the uh, paints uh, activated a little bit. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to go in and get my darks first. So we're going to paint uh, in the fashion of a la prima, which means all at one time. 
And when I paint all at one time, me personally, when I paint all at one time when I'm doing a painting, and I'm hoping you'll work with this method, it's a really great method to learn, is you just basically go in and get your darks first. So when you go in and you create your dark passages, your dark sections of your painting first, that kind of sets the tone for your painting. And then you start to look at your darks and say, okay, yeah, that's my dark, dark in my painting. Now I kind of can see where I got to make things uh, like medium toned after that, like the values and tones and values in your painting are going to, you're not going to make everything dark. Obviously you'll do your darks first, then you'll make everything a little lighter as you go. And then maybe lastly, you'll do your lightest lights or sometimes you'll leave white paper like we're going to do here. So you'll see how we do all this and how it develops. But first things first, we just go in, we're going to get our darks first. And that's just simply, I usually make my darks with brown, blue, and orange and red. And then I just keep working those three colors. You know, you can use a couple different reds, a couple different blues if you like, a little purple. But that's what I want to do. I want to get my darks going first. I'll go right into the doorway, right like that that arched, a uh, little bit of an alcove. That's like an alcove or a foyer for this entranceway here. And that's dark. And we'll get that in. And then that's setting the pace and the tone for the rest of the painting. Okay, that's dark. That looks good. Then we're going to rinse off our brush a little bit maybe just to take a little bit of water off the brush pick up a little more darks here. We'll, we're going to go in here too and do the same thing. These are darks here. Then I'm going to do a little bit of a, for the awning, there's a little bit of that undulating portion of the awning that we always see on the awnings. And there we go. I'm just going to get the darks in there. And you can mix in some oranges and things into the colors. If you want, you can add in some orange and yellows. Keep the uh, darks looking warm. Like that. But you can see that's a really strong, strong, powerful darks right there. And then we're going to come over here. And this is also dark, dark darks. I'm looking for the darkest darks. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, looks good. Looks good. See how we got those darks in here now. And again, you can pick up some oranges and things, make them a little bit warmer too. You can add some warm colors into those and then even some purple, grab some purple, put some purple in there too. You can infuse some colors in while you're working, but you got to have to do it fast. Like you wouldn't go and paint all these different areas and then start coming back and adding more, infusing more colors into your darks because then it's not going to um, kind of flow and melt, melt together and flow together. So you have to get your dark in first, then you might add in a couple more, uh, maybe warmer colors into that dark or even cooler colors like purple. But you have to do it quickly as you're doing this, like that. And then here, we're going to do this small arched window, like that. And then up here too, we have another window, not quite as dark. These two windows up here are not quite as dark as over here on the bottom portion of the painting. So that's where I'll be a little bit aware of that and say, all right, well, I'm going to maybe make a little bit of a, take some of that blue, which is kind of like a cerulean blue. If you're used to working with my normal paints and you take that cerulean blue and then mix in a little bit of this warmer color or darker color, just so you get a, and then you do that. And then up here at the top of the window, there might be a little bit of a darker dark up there. But then as it comes down here, I add a little more of a damp brush. So I rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water, and then come in and just add a little bit of that 
water, damp brush, damp brush, into that window area like that. And you can kind of see how you can get some of that. And then you can add some of the other colors too over here. Up there what's a little darker. And that looks pretty good. And then the same thing for over here. It's even a little bit lighter yet over here. This is quite light. So I'll do that. I'll just leave this one lighter as I see it in the photograph I'm working from. I can't really show the photograph. I think it's copyrighted. So that's why I'm not really showing the photograph. Okay. So now I consider that we have our darkest darks in really and it's looking really good. Now that we have our darkest darks completed and there's a little more over here too. Well, that's not that dark. I'll put it over here anyway. That's a little bit of a shadow there. Okay, now that we have these darks done, I think we can, again, with the Alla Prima method, we can just continue working. We don't have to worry about stopping. So let's start making some greens. We can make our greens over here. Actually, that's more convenient to make them over here. So I'll take my greens and make one green there. That lighter green, darker, like a more a cooler green over here. What else are we going to have for those greens? Maybe a little yellow too. Up here, maybe a little bit of a warmer green up there with some yellow. Like this, like that. And then maybe we add a little bit of that brown there in the center just to tone it down a little bit. Now at this point, I think I want to use a the flat brush here, like so. I, I might even go with this larger. So this is what's fun about the flat brush, is you can cover a lot of area quickly. So let's do that. Let's cover a lot of area quickly with our large flat brush. And I think what I'll do too is, um, I'm going to do some blue wash for the sky. Like that. So I'm doing my blues here for my sky. A little bit of green maybe. A touch of green in there. Okay, I think that looks good. Let's do our sky washes and again I'm going to start flowing on the paint really well with this large brush. I'm going to go around my roofs here. And then I'm really going to get lots of water in there. And I'll try to change around the colors. So you see how I'm just really having a fun time with the colors and the washes. Um, and then I'm going to paint around the chimney here and the roof here. And when you first start out, it's gonna you're going to be going a little slower. I work a lot with the uh, flat brush, so I kind of feel very comfortable with it. And it's really great because it's for architecture, it's great, like houses and buildings, like city scenes, architecture, homes, things like that. If you use the flat brush, it really, you can zip a really quick around things. You can kind of see how I'm doing that, and then I'll, I'll kind of blend in to the shrubs and the trees and things like that. A little bit like this. I'll just kind of tie into those like that. And we'll get some greens next. Let's get some greens. Let's use the greens we already mixed. Okay, look how good that looks. And again, we'll do some lighter greens there. I might leave a space there. 
between the two washes just so I don't have them flow in to one another right now. We'll, we'll, we'll tie those together in a little bit once the paint starts to dry a little bit. So there we go. We'll put this over here like that. Okay, then we'll do a little more lighter wash like this for the I might make a little bit more of a yellow over here. hope everyone is having a good time with this. This is really fun. Using the flat brush is great. You can really cover a lot of ground like I was saying before and you you get that really beautiful wet washes going on the paper and I think we will start to go back with our uh, uh, round brush next so we'll mix up a little more greens here okay a little more greens over here And I'll put these shrubs in like this, kind of just scrub them in. We'll put shadows under them too to make them look more interest, interesting in a, in a few minutes once it starts to dry a little bit. And I'd be careful as you go, maybe to not, you can always leave a little bit of a white line there like that. You can leave a white line of paper there so that this doesn't flow into the grass area here that you just created. So you can always leave a little bit of a line, a buffer line, until the paint start to dry a little more and then you have a little more time to, t you know, let things dry in this way. Things don't just keep flowing in from one thing to the next. But that looks pretty good. And then a little bit of a lighter green on top here where the sun is catching the tops of these shrubs over here. So that's always kind of nice to capture that and a few branches and things. Okay, looks good. And now I think what we can do is start with our shadows. But before we do our shadows, let's do one thing before we do that. Let's actually, let's take our green one more time, our green over here with some brown. Maybe we make a little bit of a darker shadowy kind of green with a little bit of brown in it. I would even take some of this and splash a little bit like this. Get a little bit of that splashy kind of feel over here too maybe. Like that. A little bit of that darker green under here maybe. So I guess we try to get some of the darker greens underneath. Underneath uh, the shrubs so that you have like the light kind of shining on the tops of the shrubs where you have lighter green and then a little bit of a shadow green underneath the tops of the shrubs. Uh, can, does that make sense? So you want to have dark underneath where the light is hitting. So the light hits the tops of the shrubs and trees. Brighter green, brighter green, brighter green. And then where the bottoms of the shrubs are and trees, a little bit of a darker color. And then what we'll do is we'll actually infuse in right now Let's make a shadow color. Let's go in with some purple, like this, some purple, brown, 
brown and purple. And we'll see how that little bit of a shadow under there. Like that. That looks pretty good. And you can let things dry a little bit at this point. Maybe it's a little bit too soon to put in this shadow. So if that's the case, let it dry a little more. But I think that looks pretty good. And then you'll see how this all comes together beautifully as we tie in our shadows underneath our awnings and on the eaves of the roof here. And we'll put in some of that beautiful clay tile roofing, which is the orange. And um, that's what we'll do next. But let's let this dry now. We have everything pretty good. We've got that first kind of like bit of areas that we want to kind of tackle first with our painting. Even when we're doing a la prima here, we're sort of kind of like working like we would be doing if we we're working doing the glazing technique. We kind of want to get that first bit of washes in let them set up and kind of dry a little bit. And then once that starts to happen, which is already starting to dry quite a bit, then we'll go in once that uh, drying process happens. You can use a blow dryer, or you can let this dry a couple hours. It's up to you. And then once that happens, then we can go in and do our shadowing under the eaves of the roof. We could put in our clay tile rooftops uh, next. And uh, I think we can finish up at that point. So let's uh, take a quick break. Again, at this point, you can do some blow drying or you can wait a couple hours and let this dry a little more uh, naturally. And then uh, we'll get started again. Thanks for watching. And I always remember, oh, if you're having a good time, give me a thumbs up. Why not? Uh, helps my channel a lot if you can give me a thumbs up. Free to do. You just give me the thumbs up. And also I mentioned too, always, if you want to continue here on my channel following, joining us uh, all together here as we paint every week, week after week, month after month, and year after year, you just click on the uh, subscribe button below. There's a button that says subscribe. You click on subscribe, and then you click the bell, notification bell, which is the top top bell. When you hit subscribe, you'll see three bells. You click the top bell, and all that's going to do is every time I make a new video, it'll alert you in your YouTube um, channel so that the next time you open up YouTube, whenever it is, you'll see that I have a, a new video. And uh, it doesn't uh, do anything else, so you won't get any crazy emails or phone calls or anything like that. This is just YouTube's way of saying, if you like my channel, you like painting, artwork, we're doing this together, you click subscribe, you're kind of like, we're all together in like our, uh, we have a family, an art family here, a watercolor family here of painters, we're all artists, we're all painters. Let's continue together. You click subscribe, it just means you won't lose track of me. I know sometimes people come on my channel and they've even written me and told me like they it took them like a month or two to find me again uh, after they watched my video they loved it and then all of a sudden they said I couldn't find you again and then I just explained if you hit subscribe it's no problem you hit subscribe and then you can you know you will automatically be linked to my YouTube channel and I'll always alert you with new videos and uh, you'll never uh, lose track of me okay all right so let's get started in just a few minutes we'll um, finish up uh, the uh, rest of the painting. Okay, so we're going to actually mix up some orange for our beautiful terracotta orange roofs. Um, looks like my palette, I'm, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to empty my water. I tend to like to uh, empty out the water container two or three times when I'm painting. Especially when you're going to be doing light washes. Like if you're going to do a really light um, wash for like a sky or something like that, then you'd really, you absolutely want to do like a fresh uh, change out of your water and some fresh clean water here um, I didn't change out the water until we're at this point here and then now we're going to mix up some of this orange clay tiles so I want to use orange if there's a little bit of other colors right there that's not going to be a problem and there's some more orange there darker orange so that would be more like a red orange over here and then your regular cab like a cadmium orange or like a just a straight orange like a pretty much a mix of uh, yellow and red mix half and half yellow half red you get that really like pumpkin orange and then over here you know you have more of a red orange this might be like mixing a pumpkin orange and then adding a little more red to it and then there's some yellow here but uh, I think that's good we have our oranges here I think this is fine and we can just go right in and we'll start at the top up here and I'll even do this over here. I'm going to do this. And these are the clay tile roofs up here. So I'm going to do kind of like a little bit of a 
like a little bit of that, a little bit of those arched shapes like that, just to kind of mimic the shape of the clay tile roofs. And then here I'm not going to worry about it so much because we're going to add a little bit of um, detail with a detail brush, some of the shapes of the clay tiles on these portions over here where these are. So main thing is we just want to start getting our orange roof colors on here, which are terracotta roofs. And I can just use my regular, and I cover this in my book, how, you know, you practice your parallel brush strokes. So right now I'm going to practice my parallel brush stroke, which is basically you get your paint on your brush, you touch down onto your paper, and then you slowly, gently glide across your paper so that you get a nice parallel line like that. And then you go in and do the same thing up here. And you can actually do your whole roof section just like that. One parallel stroke at a time. And then once you're kind of comfortable with that parallel stroke like that, well, then you'll be working on another, possibly another type of uh, stroke, like a Z stroke or an N stroke or an S stroke with your brush. So once you practice a lot with your brush, and you only have to do it a little while, you know, you practice it maybe for six months or a year of brush strokes that I have in my book that I sh show right in my book. And then um, once you do that for about six months to a year, then you don't even have to think about it anymore. It's just locked into your brain. And then once you're painting, you'll just naturally do all of these brush strokes and you won't be thinking about it. You'll be thinking about other things, which is like, what colors am I going to mix and what's next? So that's the thing with watercolor. The more you kind of practice on some of the really good basic fundamentals of watercolor, it frees you up to do other things. Same thing as if you're driving a car once or, or riding a bicycle. Once you learn how to pedal and steer your bicycle, or if you're in a car, once you learn how to use the gas pedal, the brake, the steering, once you have that all down and you're doing that after a couple of years, you're not thinking about that anymore. Then you're able to like watch the traffic, watch, make sure you're not, there's people around, be safe, all these different kind of things. So that's, what's good about practicing the fundamentals. You kind of once you do that, then it's locked into your mind and you don't worry about it anymore and it just comes naturally. And then you're thinking about other things that are, let's say, more important. So we have our clay tile roofing coming along really nicely. This here too. Again, same thing. I'll go in, get my orange color. Then I'll take my brush and gently tap, touch down and come across like that. And there we have it. And I believe that is it for our clay tiles. Yeah, I think that's it. We might have a little bit of clay up here for our chimney flue. There we go. Do that. And I think that's looking fantastic. All right, so now that we're working on this, I think we can even start going into the shadows right away. Um, so let's mix our shadow color. Shadow colors are going to be... Um, I would say we can use this blue here that we have, which is like a medium, not too dark blue, not too much purple in there. We can use some of the purple in here too, maybe to mix in there. And I also see some, you know, warmer colors too, like greens and yellows. And even some oranges. So we can take these yellows and oranges and mix them in with our cooler shadows, which are our blue colors and even a little bit of purple too. Let's see how it goes, but I think we're gonna have a lot of fun doing this. And again, the shadows are really fun because then you start to see everything all tied together looking really good. So we'll start up here at the top and we'll do the shadows up here. And I'll go right over the window with it too. And that shadow, we drew the pencil line of where the shadow is So, and then a little bit of orange, and a little bit of yellow and green too. Looks good. Same thing. Let's, uh, where else do we see shadows? I see them over here, over the tops of this uh, doorway here. So let's go in the same thing. We'll get that blue. I forgot to add a little bit of purple in there. 
maybe up top is a little more of that purple. And then over here, same thing. Let's a little bit of that blue. It's a medium tone. It's almost like the sky tone. Almost the same as the sky color, you know, as far as the dark and light of it, the tonal value of this shadow and this shadow and the rest of the shadows we're going to do, it's kind of similar to the sky tonal value, that same, not too dark, not too light, kind of that medium. So that's there and then a little bit of the green, a little bit of the orange. Then I take it, dry off the brush with a tissue. Rinse off the brush, dry off the brush a little bit with the tissue, and then blend those colors around a little bit. Like that. Okay, and then there's also more shadow under here. I went over that one part there. I wanted to leave that. We'll use some white paint, too. If you, if you go over a few... Um, areas you can always cut we'll touch up with some white paint you'll see in a little while we'll touch some things up with some white paint and then we're going to go back in again same thing oranges and green uh blues and greens over here that's all in shadow under here a little bit of the warm colors too Golds, greens, and the same thing up here. This is all in shadow too. And you can always remember that if you have to, if your shadows aren't dark enough, and I went around the awning, because this is a white awning here. These are white awnings here. I go around those. The shadow doesn't quite catch those. Um, you can always remember, you can add a little bit of, you can make the shadows a little darker if you want to later once it dries. Like you don't want to keep adding, does that make sense? You can, you can let all these shadows dry, like the shadows that we've done here, all through here, over here, under here, up here. You can let, if they're not dark enough when you first do it, that's okay. You can go over with another wash once it dries 100%. You could take the blow dryer, dry it off again and then add just a little more paint to it to make it darker if you don't think it looks dark enough. And if you go too dark, well, that's okay too. You know, we're just gonna start another painting and keep working. We're not worrying about um, how perfect things look when we're painting. We're basically, we're painting to get better each time and practice our skills. So you can even think of all your work is basically practice all the time, so never need to worry about that just keep working and going and going and going like the energizer bunny so there we have it we have some really good shadows this bush is putting a shadow over here on this wall like that and a little bit of warmth in that cool shadow would be good like that. Then I might take some per, uh, blue and purple. I might dry off a little bit of the palette over here so that I can mix some drier paint. Brown and purple. Brown, purple, and blue. And then I can add a little bit of that darker shadow that I wanted to do before. Underneath the shrubs there, the hedges and the trees over here. Some more darks over here too. splashes I never worry about that okay 
and then some more clay steps here. Like that. There's some green shrubs over here. Like that, and there's maybe an orange clay pot here. All right, I think you're getting the real feel of this now. I'm sure you are getting some great results as we go along here. And uh, let's do this. Let's, again, let this dry a little bit more. Again, you can t use the blow dryer to dry off some of these uh, sections that we just completed. Um, I'm going to do a couple lines across here where the sidewalk is. Like that. Uh, what else could we do? I think that looks good. Everything. I'm just checking everything. I'm looking around the painting, looking around the painting, and I'm thinking everything looks really good at this point. I think we were actually um, pretty much set. I think uh, the only thing I do see is the shadow over here. There is some shadow over there from these trees on the facade of this building. And also, um, there's some shadows from the awning over here, right here. A little bit of yellow, maybe, too. A little bit of yellow in there. Warm it up a little bit there. And I also, too, I like to add a little bit of yellow to the facade here. Just a tiny bit. Kind of really makes it look like it's a hot, sunny day with some really bright sunlight on the uh, facade over here. A little bit of orange too. A little bit of orange paint with just a little touch and then you thin it out and make it really light with uh, the brush and some damp brush, clean water. Same over here, up here on this wall. Go a little bit of that, a little bit of yellow up here, just a touch on the chimney. That lemony yellow looks really good, brightens it up. Same thing here with the awnings, a little bit of that yellow on the awnings. All right, I think we really are in great shape right now. The last thing we have to do is we'll come back. We'll use some titanium white, so I'm going to show you how to use some titanium white with your round brush that we have right here. So we're going to use this white to do some touch-ups to kind of recapture some areas that we painted over. So sometimes when you're painting and you're trying to leave white paper and you paint over your white paper, you don't worry about it. You leave it, say, you know, you just chalk it up as you... Oh, not a problem. You went over into your white awning here or oh my gosh you went over some of your wall on your house with some blue paint from your sky no big deal that is not a worry at all once you're done at the very very end of your painting when everything's 100 percent complete and you finish out your whole painting you don't worry about a few spots got a little bit out of control or you had an issue or this or that always finish out your paintings don't worry about it unless it's so bad then you just throw it to the side and pick up another sheet of paper the next day or the next day or two and you start another one. But if you have a painting and it's going pretty good and then there's a couple trouble spots on there, don't worry about it. Leave them alone and just keep going and keep working on the techniques and the methods that we're doing. And then at the very end of the painting when everything's all good and everything's 100% dry, then we're going to come back and I'll show you how you can fix up a couple spots with your titanium white paint. And that'll be it. We'll have everything all set here looking gorgeous. Okay? All right, we'll be right back.
All right, we're getting back here, focused, and gonna we're gonna finish up the painting here. And uh, ooh, ooh, ooh! I wanted to mention before I do the titanium white final details, I did notice that I had to finish one thing. Let's not forget to do this. We're gonna get a little bit of the dark. Um, again, if you if you need to, you always can take uh, a little bit of paper towel or tissue, and you you try to keep one area that you can kind of here and there you can dry off and make sure that the palette's really dry so that you can get some straight paint here like this the blue brown blue brown and maybe some purple blue brown and purple with a little bit of orange too a little bit of red in there just like a nice good dark with some warmth in it too with some red and then we what we want to do is do some clay tile looking or uh, arched shapes which are just like little little bits of round little like this like upside down smiley faces basically and that is going to give you that real authentic clay tile look like that if that makes sense now, if we just left it a straight line, it's not going to look and read as well as if you were to do these really good-looking arched shapes here. Like that. Same thing up here. And we did them up here. Let's do a little more here. So you can see I'm kind of just doing those arch, arched shapes like that. And I also forgot to do the shadow under here, over here, up top here on this roof. So that's another thing I forgot to do. Let's do that. So that's what happens when you take breaks, you come back, you realize, oh, I, I need to do a few more touch-ups on my painting and that's fine. So we did our little small uh, reversed smiley face shapes. They're almost like little small soft, soft looking arch shapes. If we were to do them on paper, um, you know, they're kind of like this, just like really soft. Like they wouldn't be like this so much. You could make them a little more like that too. You could do it like that. I would, I would make them, you know, kind of like, I wouldn't try to do like a perfect like this. I would do it more like, you know, a couple here like that, a couple you know, make them a little bit different, a little more interesting, you know, break them up, don't make them look like too perfectly symmetrical or anything. But that's kind of the idea of the shapes of the clay tile roofs here. And then what you do is, since we have the colors here, you, we can also do the, um, the lines on the clay tile roof. So what I would do here is for the lines on the clay tile roof, I would get some darks on my brush, but then I would dry off my brush like this and take off a lot of the paint. You don't want much paint on there. Just a tiny bit of paint you want left on your brush. Because you just want, uh, does this make sense? A little bit of an indication of the clay tile roofs like this. The lines in the roofs. And then as you go over here this way, they sort of, the lines go out like this. So you can see how this line's a little bit on an angle like that. We do this again, take some paint on there, dry off some of that paint on a paper towel or tissue, and then just get some uh, like that. And then they kind of, they do that. And then as they go here, they're going to be a little bit, maybe this way a little bit too. I would say you can keep them pretty much straight here though. Like that. And then you can do the same thing too. You can do a few though. I wouldn't do a lot. Just a couple little, like that, in between the, the lines. Just a few. And then you do the same thing over here. So I'm hoping this is really going to build up some of your uh, fundamental skills with doing some interesting architecture, roofs, clay tile roofs, buildings, 
roof gables, you know, angles of roof, pitches. I'm hoping this will help you to kind of just have a little bit of more fun with uh, doing, creating architecture, homes, buildings, things like that, seascape, uh, street scenes, stuff like that. So I think that looks pretty good. It, you can kind of see how that looks much more uh, interesting like that than just leaving it just like an orange wash with nothing on it. <clears throat> so that looks really good. Gives it more interesting detail, but not too much. So you can see I didn't fuss around with it too much. I kind of went quickly just to get some of those indications of some of the arch shapes of the clay tiles. You can look up clay tiles uh, on the internet and you'll see what they look like really like detailed, like as if you're gonna buy them to put them on your roof. You could do some research on clay tiles and you'll see what they look like. Um, some of you are familiar with them already. You might have some on your house actually. Um, but in any case, that's really all I wanted to do with a little bit of the detail of the roofs as, as we see them. Now we'll get into the titanium white to get our final little bits of uh, highlights and touch-ups. So I take my titanium white, I come over here into the palette, a little bit of orange paint, very, very tiny bit of orange, and I kind of just blend that little bit of orange into the top of the tube of my paint. I just want to add a little bit of that warm orange, and if you don't have enough, you can come back in, pick up some more orange like that, and you get it into the paint the top two, you know, the top of the tube of the paint like that, and you mix it around a little bit. Then you come back in, you grab the tissue, dry off the brush, and then you come back over here to the tube, and then you just want to grab a little bit of that paint that you've mixed up with a little bit of that orange in there, just so it's not stark white. And then we set over here, I, I kind of, you can kind of see that. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, let's do this. Let's move our palette now at this point. We don't need to have the palette here. As we're doing these last little bits of detail, I can kind of lift up my paper and zoom in a little bit more on the details of finishing up here. So we have that like that. Okay, let's see if this is more helpful to everyone. There we go. All right, that's better. Okay, so now, Again, back with our white tube of paint. Titanium white with a touch of orange in there, not too much, just enough to make it look a little bit more warmer and not stark white. And then we add some of that white there. And over here, I notice I went over the building here a little bit. So I can touch up that corner of the building here with that white paint. Looks good. I also went over by accident, didn't do it on purpose. I went over this little bit of, it's like a little bit of a shelf where this window is, where there's a little potted plant on there. I don't have the potted plant on there, but I went over the actual shelf of this window there. Opening, I should say it's an opening going through into the foyer area of this section of the front entry of the house. And then, uh, did I do anything else that I needed to... I think that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit of a highlight on top of the chimney there. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, over here on the awning. I see that I went over the awning with a little bit of that green shadow color. So you see how valuable this is just to have that little bit of titanium white, your tube of titanium white. It's an opaque white. Add a little touch of that orange. And then uh, voila. You can get those little bits of whites that you might have painted over. Like that. That's helpful to have that option to be able to Anything else can I think of? I mean, I could also take that tissue, dry off a little bit of that white paint, and maybe do a couple of... Uh, 
here. I could do a couple, like a little bit of a window, uh, frames on the windows. You could also do that if you wanted to, just a few. There might be some light catching a few of the frames of the window. Uh, do I see anything else that I could do? Okay, and then I think what I can do is um, take a little bit of blue, so I take a little bit of uh, blue over in my palette, so I just want to go over and get a little bit of blue on my palette like that, and then I dry it off a little bit with a tissue, not too much on there, and then I could go underneath here like that. That might look okay. I'm trying to get that kind of feel of the sky, the sky behind the chimney, because I have the highlight on the chimney cap. Then I can see that little bit of blue, and then there's the the chimney flue. So, um, just a little bit of a very very fine detail, but it, it can sometimes enhance things and make things look pretty good. And. Uh, but I think that we've actually accomplished everything we wanted to. I'm hoping um, that everyone will enjoy the painting process more and more as you paint. And again, if this is uh, your first painting, uh, thank you so much for coming by on my channel and uh, joining us. I think we really had a fun time. I'm going to do a few more. Maybe, maybe the light's just catching a few bits of highlights on the windows over here. I hope we had a lot of fun together the first time painting and I know you're going to be coming back and joining us more and more as we go. Uh, again, we're creating all new videos each week. Every week we're creating at least two or three new paintings um, where you can uh, follow along. If you're an extreme beginner, just beginning, just starting, no problem. You're going to watch all the extreme beginner videos that I'm putting out and there's a lot that I have already in my um, archives. You can go back and check out all of the extreme beginner videos that I have. Again, probably over a hundred or more. Uh, over the last couple years and as well you can you can jump right in and start working on the other videos that we're always doing on a constant basis which is more of a um, professional level um, painting tutorial that we that we do on a constant basis so don't be afraid to go in and learn there at least watch the videos you're going to learn a whole bunch of new information that's always good and then secondly you, you might want to practice small parts of those uh, videos too, or even tackle the whole thing if you want. You know, you might have some extra time. You want to keep working along, work with all of the videos if you can. It's just more practice and you'll get better and better as you go. So again, thank you so much for coming by. It's absolutely great to work with all of you. Um, it's been great over the years now being on YouTube. So appreciate everyone's uh, support, everyone's encouragement. Thank you so much for all the kind comments. Uh, continually in the in the comment section. I know many of you that have been with me for years. I'm really happy that we're painting together and having a fun time. Or even some of you are just watching for fun and you're not really painters, but you just enjoy watching the videos for uh, the um, fun of it. So I'm glad everyone is here and we'll see you soon. Okay. See you on the next video very, very soon. Bye-bye.